Hello everyone. I am Dr. Jasdeep Singh, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering in Khalsa College of Engineering and Technology, Amritsar. Today, I am going to discuss fundamentals of electrical engineering and superposition theorem in detail. So, electrical engineering is a very important subject which almost every engineering graduate student has to study during his first year within the degree program. Within electrical engineering subject, we basically study different types of electrical circuits which may be DC circuits, which may be AC circuits. In addition, within the electrical engineering subject, we also study about the electrical machines like transformers, motors, generators and so on. Similarly, within the electrical engineering subject, we discuss about the installation of uh, electrical engineering equipment and uh, moreover about the protection and uh, safety of uh, uh, human beings from the electrical shocks and all these things. So today's topic which is a superposition theorem that basically deals with the electrical circuits. So initially I will discuss briefly about the uh, electrical circuits. After that I will uh, go towards the to network theorems. Within the network theorems I will basically give the details of the superposition theorem. So electrical circuits are basically interconnection of uh, circuit elements and energy sources. So, uh, within the definition itself, it is clear that electrical circuit comprise two things, uh, circuit elements and energy sources. Circuit elements further can be of two types, they may be passive circuit elements or they may be active circuit elements. Active circuit elements are basically the elements which basically need uh, electrical power or some energy for their operation. For example, transistor is an active circuit element because uh, like for the amplification purpose, it would need some power supply, some biasing for its operation. On the other hand, talking about the passive circuit elements, resistor, capacitor, inductor, these are the passive circuit elements. Out of these, uh, resistor is energy dissipation element. Similarly, capacitor and ener uh, inductor are energy storing elements. So these are the electrical elements which are commonly used within the electrical circuits. The second thing is electrical energy sources. Basically, uh, energy sources can be current sources or they can be voltage sources. Furthermore, uh, energy sources can be classified into two categories, dependent energy sources and independent energy sources. Dependent energy sources as it is clear from the name itself that their operation basically depends upon the working of other components or uh, their output will be affected by other components present within the electrical circuit. On the other hand, independent components are those components whose working or whose operation is not affected by presence of other energy sources or by presence of other components within a particular electrical circuit. Now going forward, when we basically study or analyze the electrical circuits, we use different laws, different theorems. The most basic laws which are used to study the electrical circuits are Kirchhoff laws. Uh, Kirchhoff law further has uh, two laws, Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law. According to Kirchhoff current law, the sum of all the currents meeting at a particular junction or a node within an electrical circuit is zero. Similarly, Kirchhoff voltage law states that in a closed loop or within a mesh, sum of all the voltages within a uh, loop is zero. So these uh, basic laws are used to simplify the electrical circuits which are uh, relatively at simpler level. If we go towards the more complex circuit problems, we use nodal analysis, we use mesh analysis. Now going, on, uh, going forward for the network theorems, they are basically used when we have to study and we have to analyze the complex electrical circuits. In comparison to the uh, simpler circuit, uh, we will study the complex electrical circuits. So within the complex electrical circuits, we use different types of network theorems. There are a number of network theorems which are commonly used within the electrical engineering. Some examples of those are like Thevenin theorem, Norton theorem, superposition theorem, maximum power transfer theorem, Telegram theorem and so on. 
Out of these, uh, Thevenin theorem, Norton's theorem, superposition theorem are most commonly used. Uh, within the Thevenin theorem, we basically replace a complex electrical circuit with the uh, a simple voltage source and in series with that voltage source, we place a resistance which is called as internal resistance. Uh, in the uh, Norton's theorem or by solving a complex circuit with the help of Norton's theorem, we basically replace the complex circuit with the help of current source and we put uh, in parallel with that current source a resistance called as internal resistance. So with the help of these theorems, we can calculate the current flowing through a particular component or a particular branch of the network using uh, our analysis. Now superposition theorem, which is a topic of uh, our today's discussion, is basically used when a number of energy sources are present within a particular network. So uh, when a number of energy sources are present, then current flowing through a particular component or a uh, current flowing through a particular branch of the network can be uh, needed to be calculated. So within those types of problems where number of energy sources are there and we have to calculate the current flowing through a particular component or a particular branch then superposition theorem is basically used. I will illustrate this with the help of example say there is a complex circuit which is having three energy sources. So in order to calculate the current flowing through a particular resistor say R which is present within the complex network we will uh, use some steps in order to solve this problem with the help of superposition theorem. So within this complex network having three energy sources, firstly we will calculate the current flowing through a partic uh, that particular resistance uh, with the help of first, first energy source only. And while doing that, we will replace the another, uh, other energy sources that is energy source 2 and 3 by their internal resistance. Similarly, after that in the step 2, we will calculate the current flowing through that particular circuit component, say resistor R with the help of a second energy source and while doing that, we will replace the energy source 1 and energy source 3 by their internal resistances. Similarly, uh, if within the step 3, we will calculate the current flowing through the resistor R due to energy source 3 and while doing that, we will replace energy source 1 and energy source 2 by their internal resistances. So uh, within these three steps we will obtain some current. Say we obtain a current I1 due to energy source 1, obtain current I2 due to energy source 2 and similarly I3 due to energy source 3. So uh, according to superposition theorem, the current flowing through the resistor R due to these three energy sources if, is given by basically sum of the individual currents which are calculated due to individual energy sources. That is total current according to superposition theorem will be I1, I2 plus I3. So in this way, we can calculate the current flowing through a particular uh, branch or a particular component with the help of superposition theorem. So summarizing all these steps and this illustration, uh, we can state that uh, we can state the superposition theorem in a way that in a linear bilateral network having a number of energy sources, the current flowing through a particular branch or a particular component is given by algebraic sum of all the currents which would be present within uh, that particular circuit element when the individual sources are considered one by one or they are considered separately. It is to be noted that when individual sources are considered, the other energy sources have to be replaced by their internal resistances. Now in order to illustrate this further, I will uh, I will uh, give examples with the help of three cases. Uh, the case one is when there is one voltage source and one current source. So we have to say calculate the current flowing through a particular resistor due to this voltage source and this current source. Now the first step, in the first step we will calculate the current flowing through the resistor R due to voltage source V. So for doing that we will open circuit the current source. This thing is to be kept in mind that when voltage source is replaced, we have to replace it by the short circuit and when we have to replace the current source, we have to replace it by the open circuit. 
So in a similar way, uh, we will calculate the current flowing through the resistor due to the source I. For that, we will replace the voltage source with the help of short circuit. In this way, uh, we can obtain the individual currents due to voltage source and due to current source and uh, we can calculate the total current which is given by I1 plus I2 where I1 is current flowing due to voltage source and I2 is current flowing due to current source. Uh, in the second case, I am uh, giving example where I will consider two voltage sources. So within particular resistor current flowing through uh, that resistor has to be calculated due to these two sources. So firstly we will keep voltage source 1 and we will replace the voltage source 2 with short circuit and in that way we can calculate the value of the current I1 say. For the second step we will replace the voltage source V1 by short circuit and we will calculate the current flowing through the resistor due to voltage source V2. After that, the total current can be calculated by summing these two currents I1 and I2. In the third case, I will consider two current sources only. Like in the first case, I have considered one voltage source, one current source. In the second case, I have considered two voltage sources. In the third case, I am considering two current sources. So when uh, I will calculate the current flowing through the resistor R due to uh, current sources I1 and I2 within the first step I will uh, calculate the current flowing through the resistor R due to I1 source only and I will replace the I2 with the open source because I2 is current source so it will be replaced by the open circuit. So in that way I1 that is current due to I1 source can be calculated in the second step I will uh, I will calculate the current flowing through the resistor due to the current source I2 and for that case I will replace the either, uh, I will replace the current source I1 by the open circuit. So uh, similar to the case 1 and case 2 uh, case 2 uh, current I1 and I2 can be calculated and the total current uh, which is uh, which can be calculated by superposition theorem is given by I1 plus I2. So with the help of these examples, I have uh, shown you how uh, superposition theorem can be helpful, can be used to calculate the current flowing through a particular branch or a particular component within the particular, within a complex circuit where a number of energy sources are present. Another important thing within the superposition theorem uh, is given within the preamble itself. Preamble is in a linear bilateral network. So uh, it's important to mention that superposition theorem is applicable only to the linear circuits and the bilateral circuits. So the linear circuit is a circuit whose response is linear that is the input output relation for the circuit must vary in a linear manner. Therefore if any nonlinear component is present within the electrical network just like diode if a diode is present within the electrical uh, circuit then the network will not be linear it will be non-linear so it cannot be applied to such networks which are non-linear similarly it is applicable to the bilateral networks only uh, in order to illustrate the bilateral networks uh, i will give you an example suppose uh, there is a two port network having port 1 and port 2 if we apply the input at port 1 and get some output at the port 2 then if we apply the same input at the port 2 and get output at the port 1 then there must be no change within this that is within a bilateral network the output or the input output relation is independent of the direction of observation or direction of application of input and direction of uh, uh, direction of taking the output. So these are the two limitations that is uh, superposition theorem is basically applicable to the bilateral network and it is applicable to the linear network only. So that is all for the superposition theorem. I hope it will help you for analysis of the electrical circuits. Thank you so much.